Hi guys, time for another page in my coffee themed notebook. This one is getting pretty big, so I have clipped it all together. Today I'm going to use a few of the bits and pieces that I bought quite a while ago. Um, I showed them as part of a haul for scrapbook.com. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it up here for you, but I'm finally getting around to creating the page that I specifically bought all this stuff for. So I've taken those two papers from Doodlebug Design and I've trimmed them down so that they're the same size as my Traveler's Notebook pages. And I'm just going to washi tape them together on the back. So I'm creating sort of one piece of paper because I'm going to do a little bit of uh, ink blending using this Crafters Workshop Ink Splotch Stencil. Now that's a mouthful. So I've just popped my um, pattern papers just onto a little bit of scrap paper there so that I don't get my desk all inky and I'm using a little bit of post-it tape just to um, sort of block off the bits of the stencil that I don't want to use uh, and to make sure that I'm not going to ink up any parts of my paper that I don't want ink on. I'm just using a little bit of a distress ink and a mini ink blending tool uh, and I'm going to create sort of three clusters of these ink splotches just sort of all over the page really. Um, there's one big one and a whole pile of little ones on the page so I'm going to repeat this large one a couple of times. Um, what I want to do is the reason I had sort of taped the two bits together as one page is so that I could do this one here in the middle just to try and join these two pages a little bit because they are quite uh, obviously <laughs> very different pattern papers one is bright pink and doodly and one is brown and coffee beanie uh, so I did want to be able to sort of combine them in some way and this I thought was the best way to do that now I totally lied I'm gonna do more than three clusters what I want to do is just sort of sprinkle these uh, ink splotches all over the page so I've got them scattered sort of from left to right and then that ink dries pretty quick but I did just leave them for a few minutes to dry before carrying on with the rest of my page now I've got this paper smooches coffee cup die and I'm going to cut um, use both of those dies so the background of the die I am going to cut in this best creations brown glitter paper uh, and the other piece of the die I'm just going to cut with white cardstock obviously there's a lot of color going on in this page already uh, my photo does have a little bit of sort of lighter colors in it and a white border so I do want to highlight the white a little bit more just to stop the page from becoming too overwhelming so the white is going to help to keep this element visible on the page you can see as soon as I put the white down on top of that glitter it becomes a real element now I'm just using a little bit of um, glue here to stick this onto my glitter cardstock using that sort of fine liner bottle makes it a lot easier as does swapping my fingers for tweezers I you know I'm learning slowly and then I can pop that piece just on top I put it down really gently and then I'm gonna grab just a piece of scrap paper just so that I can smush that down without getting glue everywhere and that's my little um, coffee cup embellishment. Love how this turned out. That glitter, the brown, gr brown glitter paper is so pretty in real life. Um, the camera is super struggling with the colors today with that dark rich brown and the bright pink and the white. It's, um, it's not particularly true to life, I will say. The colors on the real page are much more vibrant and much prettier. Now I'm gonna just basically work on my page as is and then once it's all finished I can go ahead and stick that into the notebook. I'm gonna do some stamping so it's easier on a flat surface anyway. Like I said that book is getting pretty chunky now. I'm gonna use this Bishop Street Alpha from Kelly Stamps and some Doc Brown ink from Color Theory because this Alpha is one of my favorites at the moment. Can't stop using it. Uh, so I figured it would work on this page as well. It was part of a Christmas release from Kelly Stamps, but it works just as well for non-Christmas related things. I'm gonna stamp my title, um, and it's almost title slash journaling, <laughs> um, but I'm gonna stamp it onto the left-hand side of the page, and I'm starting from the bottom 
bottom up with a little bit of a mind stretch trying to make sure I got everything uh, all the words and letters in the right order eventually I get there I started off just sort of free handing it and I thought no Diane don't ruin the page <laughs> get your ruler out so I went and grabbed my thickers alpha guide and I'm gonna make things easy for myself because there's gonna be more than one row of stamping on here so I have taped that ruler guide down onto my desk uh, and not attached to the paper at all so I'll be able to slip and slide the paper underneath the ruler which means that each line that I'm stamping I will be able to get that totally straight and just keep it all um, keep it all sort of balanced so you can see I'm working my way down but eventually the title will say home is where the coffee is and so the good thing with having the ruler guide there is it also means that I can space these words out um, appropriately. So I'm not going to have more than more space between each word than the other. I do miss a couple of um, sort of stamps to stamp it properly, but it's it's not too obvious because of the sort of sketchiness of these alpha stamps but also the busyness of the background paper does sort of disguise any stamping mistakes so I'm super pleased with that. I'm not really trying to align the words at all, they're sort of centered, I'm just kind of eyeballing it to be honest. With the coffee splotches being sort of all over the place, um, it doesn't really, there's no specific need for it to be centered or left aligned or right aligned, it is just kind of all over the place. I was sort of going for the look of like the words were coming out of the coffee cup kind of like steam I guess um, and I'm gonna use a few little enamel dots to kind of enhance that effect. So I went through my stash and found these Echo Park ones that had white enamel dots in it and I've also got those little honeybee ones on the other side and they're clear but they have sort of an iridescent glitter in them and they're super pretty. The white ones um, really do stand out off the page more than the little glitter ones. The glittery ones just kind of add that sparkly touch that I love. So I've added those up the title there just again to sort of get that column effect. But I do want to tie the two pages together a little bit so I am going to put just a few on the top um, of the photo on the right hand side as well. A couple of light ones and one of the little glittery ones just to kind of tie those two pages together a bit more. So I've got my two pages all um, sorted out so I can remove the washi tape from those pages. I don't need those anymore. Um, I can stick them straight into my notebook, but I want to add some sequins first, of course. Um, these are a coffee... Uh, I can't remember the exact name of the mix. They're from 28 Lilac Lane um, and they are very coffee looking uh, and we're basically the, the jumping off point for the colour scheme for this page. There's lots of pretty brown ones in there but there's also um, a sort of pinky tone to it as well so that's where I got the idea for the pink and brown colour scheme for this page and so I am going to use those to create a little shaker page in my pocket of the pocket page notebook. Um, that's a huge, huge bag of sequins and I didn't want to just try and start um, shaking things out from there so I tipped a few into the bowl and I'm just going to work with those. I'm going to try not to overfill this page too much uh, but I am going to use my little trick of using my fuse tool to just separate this page into little segments so that all of the segments don't just tip down to the bottom of the pocket uh, creating a super bulky page at the bottom it just it does make the notebook really hard to work with after that and I've only got a couple of pages left in this work uh, notebook so I don't need to worry too much about that but I also like the effect that it has of keeping those sequins in place without necessarily having to shake them up all the time 
So this um, cardboard piece that I'm inserting under the pocket is just a piece that I've made myself. I just drew out a few, a few different types of segments and different colors of pen so that it makes it super easy. I don't have to measure anything out anytime I want to do this. I've got my three by four inch pockets there. I've got it split into quarters. I've got it split into fifths. You can split it into halves. Um, highly suggest if you do this sort of thing a lot, make yourself a little template like this. It protects the pages underneath, but it also makes it a lot easier for you. Now I'm never too worried about how um, fused those segments are in between. I just run it through once. At the top though, I wanna make sure that that is nice and secure. So I run my fuse tool over that page a few times. The other thing I'm doing today is I try to shake all of the sequins away from the spine here, away from the middle of the page, so that I can run a row of fuse just along, just, just away from the spine, just a little bit, just to stop those sequins slipping through the middle of the book and popping out on the other side. Not all of my pockets in my pocket page notebook are always fused at the top so if a sequin slips through and goes underneath it can pop out the top so um, it, just, it just makes that a little bit more secure to run that line of fusing down the middle. And now all I have left to do is stick these two pages in. Hopefully I can get them reasonably straight. Um, I am still using my clips because this book just wants to pop open all the time. Um, I have folded the front cover and stuff back a little bit just to make it flatter to film with. So it does make it a little bit of a struggle. But eventually I get it all in and that is this fully caffeinated page all finished. I will leave any links that I've got for things I've used on this page down below for you, but otherwise if you've got any questions, let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you want to keep watching, there's a couple more videos on screen or why not check out my Patreon page, there are even more videos over there. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!